contradictions. That's the subject of today's Higher Things video short. Hey, if you love our videos, if you're learning about your faith from this guy and this guy, and you never expected to learn about your faith from those guys, go ahead and like and subscribe today. You can also go to support.higherthings.org and give today your gift, your tax-deductible gift. Keeps higher things in organization all about passing the faith to the next generation. We will teach parents. We will teach pastors. We'll teach you. It doesn't matter how old you are. We're teaching you so you can teach others. So you can teach children. Give today. Apparent contradictions in the scriptures occur all the time, especially when our friends say, oh, the Bible's full of errors. They'll find one every now and again, but usually they're redunculous. For example, Matthew says, Matthew and Mark both say the transfiguration occurred six days after an event, and Luke says it occurred about eight days after an event. Ha ha! You see? Whenever one of these things happen, hey buddy, can I have a high five? Ooh, hey, I'll put this right here. Hey buddy, can I have a... There's a good boy with a high five. Whenever one of the whenever one of these apparent contradictions occur, and all you're getting is Thor microphone sounds. Whenever one of these apparent contradictions occur, it's time to step back and read the text. Number one rule in handling one of your friends' apparent contradictions is to actually look at the text. See what the text says. See what the author is intending. Look at the context. Here in, on Transfiguration Week, we see that two writers say that it happened six days after. And one writer said eight days after. About eight days after. Now, you could escape this one with a simple, well, he says about eight days. It's not like he's got a stopwatch. And seven days. There it is. Um, it's all solved by the word about. He was sort of guesstimating. Um, it also could be that the gospel writer Luke included the days he was counting and the other two didn't. So if you'd count the day that you're counting and you count the day when you get there, you have two extra days. But again, all of these things, the first rule of handling an apparent contradiction in the scriptures is to look at the text and find out what the text actually says. And here Luke says, about eight days, around eight days. And that sort of lays it out for you that this isn't set your stopwatch. The other thing you can do is when you're sort of caught, ah, here's an apparent contradiction. You can always say, okay, um, let me check. Okay. Cause you didn't come up with this apparent contradiction. You probably found it on a website. Uh, let me check. And there you can sort of, Google the problem and find a good Christian sort of explanation of it. Better than that Google answer is to ask your pastor. Send him a text. Call him on the phone. Phone a friend. Because your pastor's called by God to give you that good answer. So like, so usually first step, check the... Um, Check the context, check the verses around it, check the verses above it. Above and below is almost 99% the answer. When you are sort of stumped still, phone a friend. All right, check the commentaries, or better, check with your pastor. And he will give you the answer. Hey, buddy, look here. Ooh, look at that. Oh, ho, 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 ho. he's the man. Again, the scriptures, we believe, don't have errors. We also believe that the scriptures cannot err. And so the error occurs with us. The problem occurs with us. The problem occurs with not understanding it. That's why you want to check the context and then phone a friend, whether it be a commentary or your pastor. Because again, 99% of apparent contradictions are easily explainable. I would say 99.9991. I've never found a contradiction in the scripture, and I've been looking for nearly 20 years. Context, phone a friend. That's how you handle it. One this week gives us an opportunity to talk about it. But remember, two things. So the scriptures have no errors, 
the scriptures cannot err because God can't lie to you. And so that if you start with that premise, then you can figure out what's going on and how to answer your friend with that apparent contradiction. And then be expecting the third thing to occur. After you give the answer, the answer either won't be acceptable to them because they don't believe or they'll just give you another one. Sooner or later, don't don't fret about it. God's word, God's word, God's word. Context from a friend, from a pastor. That's the best way of answering this. I'm Pastor George Borkert, Lord's gone, and this has been another Higher Things video short.